live from upstate New York. It's the Sox Out Racing. I analyze racing.com V8 Super Truck Series. Keep it locked to Race Spot TV and iRacing Live next. Averaging 0 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. Pit box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10, 4. Adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires. Hi above, Watkins Glen, New York. We say good afternoon and good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to Race Spot TV's live coverage of the Socks Out Racing. I analyze racing.com V8 Super Truck Championship, round number seven from Watkins Glen International, right here on iRacing Live. My name is Cisco Scaramuza, alongside Jake Sperry here with me in the RaceBot TV broadcast tower, and Paul Smith down in the production truck, making it happen, pushing the buttons. And well, round number seven, Jake, we're here at the Glen, one of the most famous road courses in America, site of, well, we're gonna be seeing IndyCar action here next week, but right now, the Camping World Trucks taking the track here. Very, very interesting because, well, uh, it's very similar to what we saw in Spa. A lot of undulation change here. This is gonna be tough for these guys. It certainly is here today. And the undulation change here at Watkins Glen is a little less stated than, say, Spa Francorchamps is. You understand that Spa Francorchamps is a lot of up and down. Watkins Glen, not so much around this circuit. So it's going to be about how drivers adapt in this situation. And what a better circuit than Watkins Glen, which always seems to find a way to produce some great action up and down the field and the championship standings. Well, they certainly have a lot of action to deal with today. They have a lot of action, but right now at the top, Bobby Zelensky at 595 has a huge lead on the guys behind him. Sven Kamert's running second right now in the championship, was able to take that away from Victor Lobato last time out at Spa Francorchamps. So Victor Lobato's fallen to third, fourth is Martin Kapal, and fifth is Daniel Thompson. Then back there, another kind of fight. We have a three way fight for eighth in points. Clifton Cockrell, Jake Robson, and Sergio Real are sitting eighth, ninth, and tenth. So a great battle there. And meanwhile, as far as the team's standings go. Well, Off Camber Motorsports has that on top, but Torque Freak Racing is right behind him. Yes, certainly are. And well, the team standings certainly do prove to be very, very crucial. And every penalty point in this series is vital. Torque Freak Racing caught through one of those teams that does have that one of those penalties. So there will be a lot of soul searching in the final few rounds. It is not as simple as that team's championship of you put your vehicle on top and you win because Bobby Zelensky's had no partner for most of this season and he's still third in the standings. Yeah, absolutely impressive run from the 83, and no surprise, he broke the track record uh, during practice yesterday. So Zelensky extremely fast here at the Glen. And something to note, two drivers going to be uh, receiving penalties at the beginning of this. Kyle Streichars had a contact penalty from round number six, so he won't be qualifying. And John Medeiros is also a late confirmation. He will neither be qualifying. So those two not on the Q grid this evening. But something to note, we always talk about the series awards and everything like that. And of course, we have to bring up the Hard Charger Award with every month. Uh, I analyze racing. They give a one month subscription to the Hard Charger. And uh, if your name is uh, uh, David Barclow, he's gotten about four of those this season, Jake, and a lot of action out of that driver. But anyone who anyone anyone who's up there towards the front generally has a shot at g going after that hard charger wars. We flash up also your road versus oval points as well. 
Yeah, and Road versus Oval, very, very narrow. Just 40 points between them, and Road starting to pull out a little bit of a gap here. But that's the sort of thing that you expect from the Hard Charge Award. A driver who can make positions up through the race, maybe not finishing up inside that top three. But with a very, very limited field, Barclow is one of those drivers that does stand out in that Manufacturers Championship. Keep an eye on that one, Cisco, because that is even closer than your championship for your overall points victory in the driver's standing. Yeah, I dropped my uh, communication with the race director, so now I, or uh, the stream director, so, so now I can actually see what Paul's telling me, which kind of helps. But you mentioned that battle between the manufacturers, 855 to Toyota, 843 to Chevrolet, so very close on those guys. And we mentioned the hard charger award, and well, like we said, David Baraclau has gotten a bunch of those. But anyone who doesn't finish on the podium and puts on the best drive, they get a shot at getting a one-month subscription to I Analyze Racing software. So if you want that, check out and tweet at Socks Out Racing. We'll flash that up several times during the race and talk about who we think at the end of the race is eligible, at least as our pick for the Hard Charger Award. But starting to get close to the end of qualifying here, about to about a minute and a half left to go. So we can talk a little bit about this racetrack, Jake. We're using the full course version of Watkins Glen International. 12 turns, three and a third miles. A very challenging track because these guys are using the boot, which if you've driven the cup circuit before, very similar in the layout of the corners. The boot though changes everything. It certainly does. There's a lot more undulation using that boot and it really does test how those rears are going to be lighting up. I've been keeping an eye on Zelensky though throughout his lap and he looks very scrappy heading into the chicane section just before the carousel and he'll make his drive to the line here Cisco I'm not confident on this it's only a 147.8 it's only pole position by a tenth of a second but compared to his practice times it's still only eight tenths of a second slower than what he's done there yeah and Zelensky normally has been as of late putting a, a hurting on the field but as is the case, not able to do it, but I think there's still some speed in that 83. We mentioned he broke the track record, Jake, so I wouldn't count Bobby Zelensky out as uh, being away from the competition quite yet because I get the feeling that 83 might be saving some stuff for the race, but 30 minutes, 30 seconds, I should say, left in qualifying here. The field, for the most part, for the most part I should say, pretty sorted out, and we're showing the number 80, oh, 84, no. Yeah, Jen yes. Mineros. Yeah, we are looking at him right now. No also lap. on a Q lap. No lap. So incident there on that Q lap, he's going to be starting from the back, which makes sense considering he had a late confirmation. He's just out there for practice. Yeah, he certainly is. And with everyone sorting qualifying, time is going to expire. Cisco, I believe you've got the grid. Yep, your starting grid for the V8 Super Truck Series just in a moment. Let that sort itself out and get you your starting grid. There we go. Starting on pole is Bobby Zelensky, as we mentioned, with a time of 147.849. Starting to his outside is Jorge Valero in a 148 flat. So a great time by the 39. Sven Kamertz is going to start third. Justin Kruitoff is going to start fourth. Fifth going to go to Victor Lobato. David Baraclau is going to start sixth. Seventh going to go to Daniel Thompson. Eighth is going to go to Jake Robson. Ninth to Clifton Cockrell. And rounding out your top 10, Jake, is George Gruber. And then only five vehicles further back from that. And Rainier's poor qualifying in 11th. James King in 12th. Martin Capal then 13th with Josh Mertz. And John Medeiros running out 15. And one pace lap here around the circuit of Watkins Glen for what will be Cisco. 19 laps worth of action. Yeah, and we're waiting on a couple more trucks to take the grid. And we'll be able to take you on board a couple of these trucks as we do our formation lap here for the VH Super Truck Championship. And once again, we remind you to tweet at Socks Out Racing during this race and after it's concluded for your vote for the Hard Charger. And uh, that's one of your guys who won't be in the top three, but the one who gained position put on the best show. So make sure you tweet at Socks Out Racing during the race and after the race for your choice for the Hard Charger Award. But getting ready, set to go here and a couple more trucks waiting to take the grid. Jake, the anticipation is building. It certainly is, and this championship battle between Zelensky and Lobato keeps on being intriguing as now Lobato starts to edge his way forward uh, as everyone gets a little bit impatient before we get ourselves off and going then for this pace lap. It's all about Zelensky versus Lobato, and Lobato's qualifying. Yes, he was only three-tenths slower than the man on pole position, but that's cost him four positions 
Whereas every other season, or every other race, shall I say, Cisco, that's cost the truck driver maybe one position overall. It's so tight up at the top of the qualifying. It is, and now we'll get an opportunity to show you around Watkins Glen International here using a bunch of our onboard cameras that we have access to. We're coming through the S's right now. We just passed turn one. You have that spot on the left side where there's a lot of runoff that's going to help those guys in the high breaking point coming out of turn number one. You head up through the S's. Now, we flash back to 2012. You remember Kyle Busch getting spun here in the NASCAR Cup Series? Well, this is how tight this area is. A very one groove part. Normally, if you're in the Indy cars, you can maybe try and go to wide, but not in these Camping World trucks. No, you certainly can't. And to keep a little segue to the Skip Barber 2K World in just a little under an hour's time, we had three wide, two deep here at circuit, and that ended in tears as well. There's opportunity for battle in this situation. And Cisco, you have to say there will always be a really good opportunity to have a move down into this chicane area. Yeah, the inner loop as they know it, uh, the bus stop, or more commonly known, you go the right, the left, another hard braking point in these trucks. Not a whole lot of downforce for those guys, so they have to make sure they get their braking points right, and they're going straight through the gravel trap. We're now in turn number five, the carousel, and then on different for these guys because they're not taking that right hand turn into the normal cup layout they're going down the hill into the boot this is the shoot here heading into turn six a very high speed turn six you have to be hard on the brakes here when you're coming out of the carousel make sure you don't go sliding off into the tire wall no you certainly can't avoid this tire wall from time to time it's all about how you negotiate away from that now in towards the toe of the boot Cisco, this is going to be a big, big overtaking moment because you can have the ability to take a late apex or an early apex, and either way, it will work out. Yeah, it will, and coming out of the toe now, you have kind of the bottom of the boot here. We're heading towards the heel, and you start to gain a little bit of speed here and a little bit of a slipstream. This is a decently long straightaway here, not quite as long as the back straightaway coming out of the S's, but a decent one nonetheless. You see the numbers on there, 300, 200, 100. Now you got to be hard on the brakes because if you mess up here coming into turn eight, you're going off in the gravel, and you might as well get stuck at that point. And otherwise, you're going to be in a whole heap of trouble as we head now back towards the cup circuit. Yeah, it's double off camber. So you got a left off camber, uh, right off camber, followed by this corner, left off camber, turn number 10 on circuit. And now these vehicles will start to just check up and then there'll be turn 11 and turn 12. And the thing we remember is, I believe it was Conti versus Sturgis, NASCAR Picanterbury Series. Those two getting together, Cisco. Conti versus Sturgis, and of course, aggressive goes around. That all happened in this final turn here in turn number 11 and on the 12 turn racetrack yeah we'll explain that a little bit later but either way we're happy for we're thanking you for joining us here on race spot tv and i racing live as the pace car heads to the inside bobby Zelensky on the loud pedal green flag is in the air and we're racing here from Watkins Glen international oh it was a very very lazy start from Zelensky. he's lucky that they're not side by side into one Vallejo trying to take it around the outside and there's trucks up on two wheels in the mid pack there i believe that was the driver of thompson i believe it was who was up on two wheels as they head to the s's section single file for the majority it is going to lay itself out behaving very nicely cockerel though getting all shades of out of shape though in the back and that's going to mean that he's going to drop a multitude of positions yeah, that will not help that truck at all as now as they're out of the S's heading towards the inner loop here. For the most part, everybody single file. A big line of trucks coming from Zelensky all the way back through your field. Top 10 trucks all single file and no one really trying to test it going through the inner loop. I don't blame them because otherwise if you go too wide, actually this we might see a little bit. Looks like uh, Sven Kamerts tried to look to the outside of the truck in front of him of Borja Valero. Not going to happen, though. Sven Kamerts, though, right on the back bumper. That's probably going to be your closest battle. That's for P2. It certainly is. And now in towards the toe. Wider line taken there through the corner from Borja Valero, looking to get the run off of the exit. Gets an OK run. That's going to be enough for Kamet. Did not have an opportunity more. Rather, Victor Lobato further back on Justin Krutov. For position number four seems closer at the moment as they all break in single file. Look down to the inside though behind as Gruber and Roxon, two teammates in reality, but in this series, certainly not getting close together. Outside line for Robson. One wiggle, two wiggle, very desperate to get on the power. Three no, he's wiggle, put him in the grass. In the yeah, shoved into the grass, almost into the wall as well. One position lost, and there'll be a misdemeanor after that. I'll tell you that from Robson. 
and Daniel Thompson just got very loose going through 10 and now into 11 they go. Thompson on the inside trying to make it work does not have the grip and so on the outside Robson's going to get a nose at the line and this is a battle royale as they head across the start finish line back into turn one and Jake Robson on the brakes hard. He's going to try and block not going to happen. Yeah barely he'll squeeze him and Daniel Thompson got a shove from from uh, Martin Kapal there in the back and Kapal falls two spots. Yes, he does. So Martin Kapal struggling in the early stages. Thought he had a half a shot, but there, just running too deep into the 90 turn number one. So easy to do. You've got so much track that you can exploit. But very crucially, when you get out on that area of the circuit, you've got to get back in as quickly as you possibly can. But it's pretty much two-tier racing at the moment from Barraclough to Gruber. And Robson going to run off. That's a slowdown. Yeah, Bram Rainier's also kind of fell off to the right side, went through the grass, so a little bit of slowdown for that truck as well as they head through the carousel one more time. And the battle starting to heap up for P3 right now. Victor Lobato starting to close in on Justin Kruitzoff, the number 13. Lobato, remember, changed teams in the middle of the season, jumped off the team he was on. That's now a privateer truck, and he's closing up on that battle with Kruitzoff. Yeah, and leaving Jim, that's a big, big decision to be made from that driver. Victor Lobato wants to fight for this championship, has missed one race this season, but now looking to try and get into that position number four overall. If he can't do it, he'll be dropping some vital points to Zelensky, who is looking like he is able to break away from every man and his neighbor. Vieiro runs wide, though, out of turn number 10. That's going to allow Kamets the opportunity to run right up towards the bumper. And again, it's a case of the waiting game here. Cisco. Yeah, it is, and this race actually starting to bear a little bit of resemblance to the IndyCar race just last night at Gateway. We're seeing packs of two cars, and that's because of the aerodynamic tendency of this track. You have a lot of long straightaways, which, because these trucks such punch such a huge hole in the air, they, it's easy for them to draft to each other, but you have the leader, Bobby Zelensky. If he can break that draft, which he's done, he's kind of out there on his own. No one can really catch him through the slipstream. No, nobody can catch him through the slipstream at all. 2.1 seconds already, but here comes Victor Lobato right up to the rear. Justin Kurutov. Kurutov may decide to throw the defensive block here down in towards this chicane. A look to the inside from Lobato once. Thinks better of it. Not able to get that run out of the corner there of the turn number four S's and into this chicane section. Not really much that Lobato has been doing. And now Barraclo might decide, hey, I've got a hard charger award to win here. I've got to make moves. Yep, remind you, tweet at Songs Out Racing for your choice for the hard charger. Barraclough already trying to grab it right now. Lobato in the best position because he's right on the back bumper of Kruitoff. Kruitoff running fourth at the moment. So Lobato looking to see if he can get back by. He's been all over the rear view mirror. And now as they head up from the toe of the boot, Lobato looking to inside, not going to happen. And yes, he's going to try and make it work. Got a very good run out of the toe. And now as they head into the heel, looking to the inside, the 13 down, hard on the brakes. And he's going to have the preferred line. Yes, he is, but he's going to be slow on the exit. Throws the block and nothing Kurutov can do. That is a very good defensive drive move there from Lobato to make that move. And it's so difficult to try and get yourself up that section towards the heel of the boot if you are Justin Kurutov because it's up here, which always supports the draft, Cisco. That's something very crucial to keep in mind as they look to continue on towards lap four of the event. Yeah, they do look to kind of, that kind of group is starting to accordion together. And then there was a group, Porsche Valero and Sven Kamerts are starting to get together a little bit. Viero though, kind of was able to pull away a little bit. So not quite, was in, not quite in the position he was going through the boot, but everyone for the most part is accordion together in this group. And remember, Jay, we have to start thinking about that pit stop because we know they have to make one. When's it gonna happen? I'm thinking around lap six, lap seven, maybe the best opportunity to get yourself down in onto the road. It's a 19 lap race. You talk about uh, tires, which get themselves maybe a little bit easier to use in the second half of a stint with less fuel. And it's all about just trying to manage the circuit. A circuit, mind you, which is relatively cool in comparison. And still, the battle P10, P12, though, is something that these drivers towards the rear will be thinking about. Cockrell, Reniers, Robson making moves through. Josh Mertz, who's up four positions already, having a very, very aggressive Jake Robson behind in the 44, looking down towards the chute. That's not going to be a place where he's going to be able to make this move right now. Now, but it's so easy to lose it as running very, very wide is Bram Rainier, who has to shut the door on Cockrell. And Robson, meanwhile, just went completely off-road. So those guys battling 
full out. Robson's looking to like he's trying to get any sort of run he can, but the problem is he keeps running off course and losing time to that truck in front of him with Josh Mertz. So he's faster, I think. But the problem is he keeps running himself off the road and scrubbing off any sort of speed he has. So a battle between those three and just in front of those guys as well as a great battle. Martin Kapal looking to the inside. Nope, not going to happen to George Gruber. So those guys going at it. So two battles going on between your uh, your seventh place position and also your tenth place position as well, just inside the top ten. Yeah, and Kapal's plus five already, looking for plus six. And there is a turn around as well up on circuit. So a big, big spinner, I believe, we have uh, in John Madero. So, and it's going to be a real shame to see him make that move. But still, Kamet seeming to be dropped off the back of Lobato and still battles going on. And Kapal still waiting for that move. And up the S's, he's about as close as anyone else has been to making a move. Get a good run through turn number three and you have yourself set up towards that inner loop. And he has not got oh, a good he's run. Yes, a he is. Oh, and there we go. Here comes the move, Cisco. Wow. I have no idea at all how Gruber saved that truck, but either way, Kapal was able to get by safely, and he's just going to clear him unless Gruber going to stick the nose in. Not going to happen. A lot of curb for Gruber, and that brings Daniel Thompson right into this battle. P9, that number 14 truck had a really good run at Spa, just the pit strategy did not work for him. So I'm looking to see that 14 trying to capitalize, have another good week here at Watkins Glen. Oh, and look at Bram Rainier. He's got a stunning run off the exit. Gets all of the grass, though. That's going to mean that he's going to have no real way to go down to the inside. Door left wide open by Josh Mertz. And Mertz loses one position, maybe a second as well. So rear of the field battling certainly is one where all of the excitement is going to be had at the moment. Yeah, Rainier did a very good job of finally being able to get by. Check up there. Clifton Cockrell got the worst of that. Got punched to the rear end of Josh Mertz there. They all checked up heading into the toe, but... For the most part, everybody made it through. So now their closest battle is still that battle between Thompson and Gruber. Thompson looking to driver's left this time is head back onto the cup circuit. And right now, Thompson looking maybe for the undercut. Gruber going to go wide. He'll get a lot of curve there. And Thompson, meanwhile, flat. But I think Gruber got a little bit better of a run. He had more track to do it. Yeah, he certainly did. They get a better exit, actually, out of turn number 11 into 12, which is named as turn number 11 to make it really, really confusing for both of us trying to work out where we are and what we're doing. So still, Gruber versus Thompson happening. The 90 may be a good idea to go down to the inside. It is downhill. It means that braking's a little bit more difficult into this right-hander before you head back up the hill again towards two, three, four, and you feel that Daniel Thompson is unable to make this move on Gruber because of the fact that he is not running himself really close enough to get himself that massive drive out of these corners it seems that he's got good ins but no outs yeah no kidding and Thompson's starting to lose more and more time he's got to make it work into the inner loop here if he has any chance Jake to be able to close that gap and Gruber's gonna get very loose so Thompson made up all that time and now right on the rear bumper the 123 is that 14 Thompson looking to inside yeah, and Gruber's been looking very loose all race long, so he has to be careful about what is happening with those rear tyres. There's actually uh, Kapal just in front gets a little bit of the grass in front. No real worries. They all continue on their merry way. No cautions. We haven't had a yellow in, I think, about two or three races. And to the outside now, tries Thompson looking to up and under. And he's going to up and under. Had to check up on the up and under, but still waiting, waiting, waiting. Not going to happen. P2, though, certainly halting up for Viero is still having himself Kamets to work with. Yeah, and Viero, that's a great battle between those guys right now. And actually, Viero able to pull away a little bit coming out of the boot, but Sven Kamertz gets it almost all back in the penultimate turn, turn number 11 here at Watkins Glen. And Viero, he's good in some places. I think Viero's really good in Sector 2, but the problem is Sector 3, this last kind of chunk of the track, Kamertz just seems to kind of make up all the time. So it's kind of back and forth between those two. They're pretty even though in sector one. They are very even in sector one. So it means that it's going to have to be done in the areas of the track where you don't normally see a move. Borja Vieiro is one of only three drivers in this field or over this season to have got a race win. Those are Zelensky himself and Victor Lobato. Kamets, a driver who's been up there all season long, Cisco, is still yet to collect that fabled race victory. And a driver that wants to have a race victory before the end of the season, Kamets, you'd feel, is a driver who deserves it more than others. And you talked about how George Gruber was very loose. You should have seen him go through the S's, Jake, because he was all over the place. Now Daniel Thompson once again reeling him in 
and those two trying to go at it once again. This is your closest battle on track. Thompson all the way up, but the problem is, Jake, he just can't seem to find a way by. Gruber's very good in the boot, but Thompson's good on the rest of the track. Yeah, it seems that Jer Gruber right now is looking a little bit like an octopus in a brain surgery. Is now down to the inside. Thompson's going to try and send it at the shoot. Gap opens up a little bit. Now has himself side by side in towards the toe. I was saying Gruber looks a little bit like an octopus in a brain surgery because he's all over the shop, not really finding himself any form of stability. Here comes the up and under again and again. The block thrown on the middle of the apex. Just keeping your vehicle as tight to the apex as possible. Leave it as difficult as you can for any truck to try and find the way through. I don't know what I'm more impressed by. George Gruber's blocking ability here to hold Daniel Thompson at bay or your ability to find metaphors out of absolutely nowhere. But either way, Thompson looking to inside near as they come back onto the cup track. He's got a nose this time. They'll touch and Gruber's going to get sent to the outside. Goodbye, Daniel Thompson. Goodbye, says Daniel Thompson. Very good move in the 14 to make things happen. Look at the front, though. P3, P2, well, P3, P4. Victor Lobato now on the train and needs to make both positions then to get himself damage limitation against the Zelensky. Five seconds down the road from Valero. Zelensky's dominating. Zelensky's absolutely dominating. But remember, pit stop. They, everybody on this field still owes us one. Even John Medeiros, who spun out earlier, he still owes us a stop. So we have to see when does the strategy play favors for these guys? When are they going to make that move, Jake? Well, it depends on where you are. If you are the driver of Victor Labata, I would come down early, make that stop, and then use as much as fresh tires will allow you to make as they head down in towards that carousel section. So easy to wash out and get hung out to dry if you are not too careful. And well, now Kamet may be paying the price of being unable to get past Borja Vieiro. Vieiro takes the wider line in. It's a much tighter line from the driver of Kamets. That's going to compromise the exit slightly. It's very close. It's around three tenths of a second, but you got to be within two tenths in towards this section and again looking to run that a little bit wider it's so difficult with some of these sections here Cisco because you have some areas of the track which has repaved tarmac rather than the tarmac that you see here being used at the majority of the rest of the circuit it almost sort of resembles the racing line yeah it does and it kind of makes it easy to try and kind of line up your truck that way but the problem is these guys don't have the downforce to necessarily run some of those lines and this meanwhile this not only the battle going on, there's one between Robson and Gruber, but we're staying with P2, 3, and 4. And I mentioned 4 because look who sneaked into this picture. That 13 of Victor Lobato has made up, oh gee, about 8 tenths of a second. Now right on the back bumper is Fen Kamerts. And it's all about who decides to drop down when, and none of the top four are deciding to make the pit stop move just yet. None of the top five, none of the top six, none of the top seven, nor the top eight. Gruber still holding defense against Robson, but still, it is nose to tail. P2, three, and four. Lobato thinking about it, but isn't going to be able to do it in towards the 90. Up the S section, they go for the ninth time out of 19 here today. And now you feel that you've got to get the best possible run, like the best, best possible run and Kamet has certainly got that one tenth of a second down to the inside as they head themselves towards the chicane and it's going to be given here by Borja Fierro. And I think Fierro was thinking Kamerts was going to mess up the breaking point. He does a little bit but it's not enough and he's going to get very loose into the carousel but he drifted that truck through turn uh, number five there through the carousel and now it paid for Vallero because now look Lobato to the inside. So it didn't work one way, it didn't work the other way. So Vallero loses two spots in the span of about 30 seconds. Yeah, losing two positions in the space of 30 seconds. We've had our first pitters in the forms of Medeiros and Robson. So both of them look to go through. Now Vallero up into the podium has one position to get to Kamets. And the last time we were here, Bobby Zelensky had a few issues on pit road. Keep an eye out on him. You do not want to be taking liberties on the lane. It's 6.8 back between Sven Kamerts and Bobby Zelensky. But something to note here, Jake, even if it maybe doesn't fit the strategy, someone like a Borja Vallero or even a Victor Lobato might be thinking it's a good idea if I come down early, get out of this traffic, that way I can be able to put down a bit better consistent laps on my outlap and hopefully try and catch a little bit of Zelensky doing that. It's now grown to seven seconds, 7.1. That's how much Zelensky's walking away from this field right now.
Yes, it certainly is. And Zelensky made his claim to fame in the NASCAR Road to Pro Series as Viero comes in by being the master of the road, uh, road courses, which we do see when we have the Road to Pro. There will be also the circuit of Sonoma to work with. Barraclo also comes in from what was position number six out overall, as does Daniel Thompson. So they're all coming in here right now. And it seems that the split strategy is now in ball Viero's court. Yeah, Viero now, he just has to have a good stop, everything to go well in the truck. Left side's going up on that truck. Meanwhile, your closest battle, Victor Lovato. That battle between Sven Kamerts and Lovato is still going, so we're going to go back to that because all that gap between Lovato and Kamerts that they started the race with, that's gone. And now Lovato right on the back bumper of Sven Kamerts as they head through the carousel once again. Yeah, looking for that good run coming out of the carousel, down and in towards the chute, and Kamet holding that line very, very resolute in the fact of hitting every apex and then getting a good run out of the corner. A little bit less liberty taken by Victor Lobato, who has that ability to just, you know, push it a little bit wider, try and test out the limits of the grip of those Goodyear Eagles. And now getting a good run up the hill is going to be so, so crucial. 14.4 for Borgia Viero, but Lobato has a half look down to the inside and decides to back off of it there down into the hill. Yeah, he decided to get out of it, and Sven Kamerts looked very loose when he went through the toe, and also very loose coming out of the heel. And now back onto the cup circuit we go once again, and Victor Lobato hounding the rear bumper of the 66 of Kamerts. And I think either way, one of these two are probably going to pit. And it looks like maybe Zelensky this time. Nope, he's going to stay out for another lap. So these guys continuing to do battle. Does one of them pit? No, Lobato's not because he's going to the outside. And I think that's because Sven Kamerts came over the radio and said, oh, barely! Oh. They're gonna make it work. I have no idea how, Jake. We'll have to get a replay, but Lobato tried to go too wide into pit road. Lobato was trying to, well, let's get the replay on screen. Lobato was trying to go around the outside to try and chop off Sven Kamet as he gets himself down to pit road. Now he's gonna be behind, careful on pit road because the surface changes from asphalt to concrete. They both look in the box, box and he misses his box. Yes, crucial, I told you about it, Cisco. It's asphalt to concrete. Breaking distances are different. Just like Ryan Newman did in the All-Star qualifying last year, Victor Lobato just did it. He slid through the box. You mentioned that surface, and that's the difference right there. Sven Kamert's gone. Lobato finally leaves, and Sven Kamert has almost a second once he leaves pit road. That's the difference, and it's also going to be a truck because look who's slotted between him. Borja Vallejo, who, remember, he pitted earlier on. He's now between those guys, and the gap has gotten huge. It certainly has between them, but look at the battle further behind. Kurutov and Baraklo then going together at it. And I think that Baraklo is going to have a good opportunity up the hill. Now it plateaus out and level pegging as you head yourself towards the right and the left. But for, crucially for Lobato, that is the big mistake that we thought nobody had to make. And him especially is making a mistake which could cost him the title. It was 37 seconds versus a 40 second pit stop between Sven Kamertz and Victor Lovato. And that's what the difference was, Jake. He lost about three seconds on pit road, which that on track time is, well, it's a chasm and it's almost impossible to come back from. So those guys, Victor Lovato's got to dig deep if he hopes to get into the podium here, but it's going to help because Viero just went very wide on the toe. But even such, Lovato's got to make up a ton of time and he's running out of time to do it. And Bobby Zelensky has just hit pit road. Well, keep an eye on Zelensky then, race leader, looking to go lights to flag and have a grand slam race, you could say. But still, Valero and Lobato then, both of them going at it together. Oh, and all on the grass there was the driver of Borgia Valero. His truck getting very, very loose on entry into the corner. And that's going to allow uh, the uh, driver of Lobato to come back at it. But in is Zelensky. Tires are there. Up go the right-hand sides. And, well, he'll be going away all too soon. And look at that. No one in an acre of him. No, it was a 37-1. That was a better pit stop than most of the field. The quickest one we've seen today was the 34-6 by Josh Mertz, who I believe took less fuel. But nonetheless, Bobby Zelensky lightning quick on the stop, and he's gone. It's a seven-second gap still. He maintained the entire gap. Even with the new tires, Sven Kamerts could not catch him. 
Yeah, he couldn't catch him, but still, though, Vieiro versus Lobato. These two looking to have this battle going up towards turn four, turn five. And if nobody can catch Zelensky, it means it's damage limitation for Lobato, and he won't be able to make the move down in towards the chicane. And he'll have to get a good run out into the long carousel right-hander. And he does get a good run. Slightly checked up, though, into the entry of the corner. Through the mid part of the corner, though, unable to get the power down in comparison to the driver of Vieira in front of him and again unable to make it into the shoot. Yeah, and he keeps getting checked up because that's such a hard corner to pass because of the way the camber is on that corner on the shoot coming into the boot. It's almost impossible to pass, but it's possible to pass right there, especially if Vieiro goes wide again at the toe, and he's going to lose that position to Lobato. So Vieiro struggling a lot at the toe of the boot here, and he just can't seem to get the power down on these wide sweeping corners. No, and it is one of the big difficulties that these camping trucks are going to have. They are very used to high-speed left-handers with banking to help them. The moment that you flatten it out, it becomes a lot more difficult for vehicles to make it through those corners. And when you have all that weight uh, in those sorts of camping truck vehicles, it's going to make life incredibly difficult to get anything turned around. So those two kind of figured out their battle for the moment. Lobano starting to pull away. So let's flash back through the field. Let's pick up the old story of Jake Robson and Daniel Thompson. Remember, those guys were battling a little bit. Well, guess what? It's back on. Daniel Thompson is closing in the gap, and he made up a ton of time through the penultimate turn, through turn number 11, D Daniel Thompson, right on the back bumper of Jake Robson. Yes, and Daniel Thompson just needs to find himself a magical run. He hasn't been able to do that all race long so there is another chance for him in the late stages of this race six laps to go in the event when they keep on going at it forward and still daniel thompson thinking about it that he is going to be there but he gets a horrible run out of the 90 there cisco and that's going to mean he's got no opportunity down in towards the right hander look how effortless jake robson makes it look at the s's Big problem for Robson, though. A lot of slipstream coming into play, and now the hard braking zone. Can Thompson make it up? Yes, he can. He makes up decently there, but not a very good first curve through the inner loop. And now into turn five, the carousel, and Thompson trying to make up all the time he can. The question is, can he get back there in time to be able to make a move? Not going to happen, though. Down into the chute, we go into the boot once again, and Daniel Thompson closing a ton there, but he's offline. Yeah, he certainly is, so he'll check up through the mid part of the corner, try and get a good run off of the exit, but he still gained a tenth from Robson, who is being a little bit more conservative with the 21 instant points that's there. And Robson has had a little bit of a flare this race of running off wide and finding an instant here and there. So Robson, we remember to the Nürburgring last time out, got disqualified on the final corner of the event, Cisco. There's not much more you can say about Jake Robson, except he does need to tone down and he is trying to drive safely to make sure there's no more incidents. Yeah, he does, and something else to know, Bram Rainier is also a battle, but we'll get back that, to that in a moment because Daniel Thompson made up a ton of time. Jake Robson got very loose coming out of the, out of the cup track, or coming back onto the cup track, rather, and now Daniel Thompson closing in. It's about a foot between, them two, between the two. They head through turn 11, starting another lap, and Daniel Thompson going to get very loose, slides the truck through, two, through 11 and on the power, but he lost all that time he made up in 10 and 11. Yeah, he certainly did. Zelensky at the front of the field. Fastest lap of the event. 146.8. Bow down to your kings, everybody else. I think Zelensky is on another planet, but the battle for P2, Cisco. Kamet has been caught down by about a rate of eight tenths of a second on that last lap compared with Victor Lobato. The gap was six tenths across the line. Lobato is in prime position. Lovato's in prime position. He has to be able to get there and put the nose down to the inspine of Kamerts. I think that's the only way. He might even have to use the bumper a little bit, maybe to move past him. Another battle going on right now. Bram Rainier's in the 208, right up the rear bumper of 123 of George Gruber. And it's about half a truck length between the two into the carousel they go. And Bram Rainier's looking for the opportunity to go past in the 10th position. Gruber again looking a little bit loose through the carousel had to have a slight correction every correction wears a bit more away off the tires and deep in goes 
the driver of Renier is looking for any sort of chink in the armor. Not going to work, Densley. Now head to the toe and a little bit wider of a line in then from the driver of what is oh, going to be Gruber. And a nudge. Yes, there was a nudge. And that's going to mean there's a second nudge as well. Here's the opportunity up the hill. Not going to happen. Renier's going to wait. Maybe make a late lunge down up to the hill. And now looking for it. No, you're not going to make it there. Gruber slammed on the brakes to be able to get in front of Reniers there, and somehow they do not make contact to George Gruber, is doing everything he can to keep Bram Reniers behind him. The problem is, though, I don't think it's going to matter because Bram Reniers has been putting down decently faster lap times than what George Gruber's been doing, and I, I don't think he's going to be able to contend in anything. That gap is closing as Gruber's going to get very loose, nearly hit the tires, and that's what Reniers was waiting for. Yes, and Reniers is going to get that position very well done. But look at Lobato and how close he is to Kamet. It's not going to make the move then in towards the chicane. But he has a very, very good opportunity now to start applying all of the pressure that Kamet doesn't want on the rear of his Camping World truck. So now, Victor Lobato applying that pressure, looking for any way to go down to the inside, won't do it, in towards the chute. Looking for the toe of the boot, though, that may be a place where he may get a sniff down the inside. Time's running out, but he has a decent amount of time, does Victor Lobato, to set up this pass. He doesn't have to try anything yet, Jake. He doesn't have to risk the truck. Well, he doesn't have to risk the truck as long as he doesn't drift through more corners like he just did through the toe because he's going to lose time to Kamertz who had a very good run through there. And Lobato, if he's going to slide the tires like that, he's not going to have the chance, but a very good run through the heel and it makes it almost all the way back. Yes, and that was more rather Kamets not having a good run. He missed the apex into the heels. They now come back out onto the Cups course then at turn number 10. 11 and 12 then left to go. And Lobato thinking about setting up the run. You can do it into the final corner. He's tried it already around the outside. But again, this time he decides to wait on it. Not going to have everything going on. Well, this two can't win the Hard Chargers Award, even though they are fighting so very, very desperately. But someone who can, maybe Martin Kapal? Maybe Martin Kapal, but not a lot left to go there. David Baraklau, he's also in a battle with Kruitov, and also that Daniel Thompson battle still going with Robson, and that Rainier's battle still going with Gruber. That Rainier's battle actually got a little physical, it looks like. A little bit of damage to the front nose cone of the 208, so not a lot of fun those two are having as Gruber gets loose on that group again. But that battle for second, we're going to keep an eye on that because that's for points. That could change the face of this championship because Coming into tonight, Victor Lobato was eight points behind Sven Kamertz. If he can finish ahead of Kamertz here, that's going to help a ton. It is, and Sven Kamertz will know that he's got to get his own points for his own title push, even though he hasn't won a race this season. He has been the Mr. Consistency and has been you know, accruing up all the second and third places in the world to keep himself in this title fight. So Lobato now looking at the inside, maybe at the toe of the boot. That's not going to work. Maybe has a look to the inside. That's not going to work, though, as he tries again for an opportunity. Won't get the run out of this toe. And now looking up to the heel, a big wiggle there from Kamet but it's going to be enough to keep him safe for probably yet another half a lap. Lobato's starting to run out of chances to use that rubber because every time he tries to make a move, the truck gets very, 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 very loose. So Lobato has got to make sure if he's going to make a move, he needs that truck to stick because Sven Kamertz, if he's been doing anything right at all, he's been gotten, he's gotten very good runs out of the corner and to the point where even if Lobato has a nose in on the inside, he can't make it work, Jake. Oh, but look at Thompson and uh, Robson at the moment here, Cisco, side by side through the heel. Now up onto the left-hander, which is all going to be advantage. Thompson hangs out the man to dry, and still they hold it too wide. But that's going to be enough to say that Robson, I think, will be unable to hold it. But he's going to try play. it at turn 11. Oh, my word. Robson with the defense, probably of the century, gives him a little tap on the left-hand side. And thank you very much. I'm still holding that one. This ain't over yet, though. Daniel Thompson still has plenty of places where he can fire it to the inside. Does he try anything going into turn number one? No, not going to happen. He, he closed up the gap. Absolutely, Jake, in a very good run out of turn one. But Thompson now has to stay single file. He can't really make anything happen through the S's. That battle with Lobato and Cambridge is starting to even out a little bit. Lobato starting to fall back a little bit, so... I'll introduce you to another battle. It's Grutov versus Baraklau all over again. Baraklau trying to steal our hearts and the Heart Charger Award all over again. 
Yes, he only needs to make this uh, one position to be eligible for it, and hardly anyone right now can be claimed as eligible at this moment. Only one driver, I do believe, has actually gained positions outside of the top three, and that is Martin Kapal, you can argue in this situation. So Kurutov looking to make himself a good defensive drive against that driver of David Baraklo, and Baraklo waiting for that move. He's running out of time now. He's got two laps after this to make it happen. And two laps, it's as simple as it sometimes doesn't happen. Look out, though, for the battle for P2, P3, because P4 may get involved. Victor uh, Borja Vieira, even, shall I say, still in the mix. He's still in the mix, but I think we're going to have to see some contact between places two and three if anything's going to happen for that 39 truck, the battle. Oh, Thompson, oh, looks like contact around goes Daniel Thompson into the gravel trap. One truck incident, so we'll stay green, but that got very sketchy, Jake, down into the heel. Well, they were starting to lean on each other there, Cisco. And once you start leaning, you do have the emphasis for maybe an incident to happen. And well, it is the unfortunate incident that does happen. Thompson will have to pay the price, but with two to go, Lobato needs to have a decisive run. And that's the last thing that he's had all race long. Yeah, that was a bunch of radio traffic that uh, we're not going to hear for that one. So we'll let those two talk it out after the race. But either way, Victor Lobato closing in. He closed that gap down, Jake. This is not over for P2. No, it certainly is. And in towards the chicane, yet again, looking very similar to a bus stop as things stand. But again, Kamets just has everything tidied up together. He's very uh, calm. He's very sophisticated in the way that he is handling that truck. It's almost as if it's like any other vehicle on the IRC service. There's no real effort being put in, it seems, from the surface of Sven Kamets, who runs wide, though, off the exit. Here comes Lobato to the outside of the toe. It's a long way around that he's got to do it like Charlie Borman, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it long way around. He holds the nose. They touch, and that is Lobato shoved into the wall and one position lost. And Vi Borja Vieira able to get back by, and I thought that Gravel was going to do in Sven Kamerts their replay on your screen of what actually happened there. And they were going side by side. They almost made it work, but Sven Kamerts was able to apex out of the corner. Maybe a little bit of a defensive move, but I don't think he realized, Jake, the 13 was still there. And instead of closing up the lane, he put Lovano into the wall. He did, and now Lobato has lost crucial points because of it. He's got a lap to go, and I doubt we'll see him get past Vieiro. He will try, and he'll throw everything, the kitchen sink, and a little bit more at Vieiro to get that position number three back. Oh, battle looks like further back in the field. George Gruber going to the inside of Bram Raniers. These two aren't done yet. Raniers finally making the move. And up to the inside as they head back onto the cup circuit. And Rainier's going to fire it in and drift in front of Gruber. Gruber not happy the shunt to the rear end of the 208. But he's gotten that position. He has. And Joe Gruber there has seen Bram Rainier's give him a taste of his own medicine of the sideways variety. So now with that with a lap to go, that one's going to be very interesting towards the end. But once again, it's the same old story. Mertz, though, turned around in the 28. And that is going to be him with a blown engine as well. But for Zelensky, it's the same old story. 13 second gap. Yeah, and he's already in the boot where Sven Kamert's just coming through the carousel right now. So Bobby Zelensky looks like he's put it on cruise control. That driver of the number 83. And uh, just a couple more short corners to go here, Jake. And he's secured himself another victory in this INLI's Racing's V8 Super Truck Championship. Yes, he has been absolutely fantastic from minute one to minute last. But I was looking at Lobato, and he was nose to tail out of the carousel. But now dropping back, it will be last gasp for him. But Zelensky, no last gasp at all. It has been dominance personified from Bobby Zelensky yet again. A battle to watch when we come to the line. Martin Kapal, David Baraklau, the triple five and the 64. But that's then, this is now. Bobby Zelensky rounds it through turn number 10. And now into turn number 11. He's going to get it done, Jake makes it out of turn number 12 and it's it's full power right now because Bobby Zelensky he's bringing home another checkered flag Bobby Zelensky wins at Watkins Glen International Four wins this season and the battle for P2, 3, 4. Lobato's got nothing left to argue against. He's got P4 and not position three where he had earlier on. He will be very upset about that. Araklo, though, has got all the pressure in the world. Is it a perfect final corner? Oh, you bet it is. Baraklo, what a fantastic defense. Baraklo holds off Kapal Robson. Meanwhile, on his own, we flash back to that battle. Daniel Thompson 
pulled away from Bram Rainier's there and George Gruber too far back from Rainier's to be able to do anything. So all the battles even down. It looks like maybe a little bit of shenanigans going on perhaps with uh, Rainier's and Gruber. No, it looks like they were okay. So everybody now making it across the line. Only three trucks left across. And it looks like Rainier's is going to steal away that P10. Yeah, it is. He's going to steal away that P10. But look at Josh Mertz as he makes his way to the line, looking a little bit smoky, shall we say, at the moment there. Of course, that contact has really not been beneficial. It's three, four laps, I do believe it is, to serve a meatball. And if there is so much damage on Josh Mertz's machine that is effectively undrivable, he's doing very well to bring it home to the end. Yeah, Mertz coasting that truck home, making sure the engine doesn't blow. He's just got one more corner to do it. And the 28 is going to be able to bring it home. Final corner for Josh Mertz, and he'll make it P14, last truck here in this race, and he's going to do it. Gets to the front straight away, and across the line is the 28, but that wraps up all the drivers on track. So, Jake, why don't we go through our final finishing results? Why don't we indeed? What a fantastic race that we have had here today. And Bobby Zelensky, Cisco, 34 minutes and 50 seconds. we still got 13 over the rest. You cannot catch Bobby Zelensky in this form. No, you cannot. Sven Kamertz brings it home second, trying to get as many points, trying to stop that gap from getting bigger and bigger between him and Zelensky. But Zelensky was able to pull away. Sven Kamertz, OP2, not a bad run for the 66. Yeah, not a bad run for the 66 at all. Borja Vieira then position three, Victor Lobato. Championship points lost in fourth. Justin Krutov will finish fifth position. And David Barraclo goes nowhere, six to six. Yeah, and Martin Kapal going to finish 7th. Jake Robson's going to bring it home 8th. Ninth going to go to Daniel Thompson. 10th to Bram Rainiers. George Gruber, Clifton Cockrell, John Medeiros, Josh Mertz. Round out your 14-truck field. And, well, we're going to step aside here for a moment as Bobby Zelensky celebrates on the front straightaway. We're going to step aside so we can hear a little bit from our sponsors. This is the Sox Out Racing. I analyze racing.com V8 Super Truck Championship on Race Spot TV and iRacing Live. Don't go anywhere. Driver interviews are next. Averaging 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. His box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10, 4. Adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires. Introducing a whole new form of racing to the best online racing simulation in the world. This is Dirt Racing on iRacing.com. Race online at some of America's most legendary dirt tracks, including Eldora and Williams Grove. iRacing is the premier online racing game featuring NASCAR, IndyCar, sports cars, and now World of Outlaws, the leading sanctioning body for dirt racing iRacing is easy to use and features a centralized ranking system to make sure you have the best experience at any skill level. With a massive inventory of high precision laser scan tracks and cars with an unmatched dedication to quality and detail, iRacing gives you the most authentic online racing experience available. Thanks to iRacing's dynamic track system developed specifically for dirt racing, tracks change over the course of a race, just like your favorite dirt track on a Friday or Saturday night. From a slick racing group all the way up to the cushion, iRacing's dirt tracks deliver non-stop racing action. Partnered with the World of Outlaws, iRacing is your source for the most authentic dirt racing experience available, featuring four brand new tracks and 11 new cars, including street stocks, Legends cars, late models, NASCAR trucks, winged and non-winged sprint cars, with much more on the way. Join the dirt revolution on iRacing.com and start slinging mud today.
Well, the dust has settled here from upstate New York as we welcome back you, welcome you back to post-race coverage of the Socks Out Racing, IanalyzeRacing.com V8 Super Truck Championship right here on Race Spot TV and iRacing Live. Cisco Scaramuza, Jake Sperry. And before we get a chance to talk to our winner, Jake, let's break down and digest that race a little bit because there's a lot of action going on, a lot of very drifty trucks out there, but no yellows and a clean race for the most part, save a couple spins. Yeah, save a couple spins, but it was great battling up and down your field. We've had storylines up and down, which have meant that all of the championship has changed from minute one to minute last. But there seems to be one constant when it comes to this sort of racing. It's that if your name is Bobby and ends in Zelensky, you normally find yourself towards the top. You just stole my segue. But either way, that's okay because we've got Bobby Zelensky, so we can talk to him a little bit, see if we can get him in here. Bobby Zelensky brings home the victory here from Watkins Glen International and pulling him into victory lane right now. Bobby did it again. A, a huge gap. 13 seconds back to Sven Kamer. Dude, I don't know how you do it, but you pulled away from absolutely, absolutely everybody. Talk us through it. I don't know. Everything seemed to be just flowing today, really. I just my uh, driving flowed really well here. I do have a lot of experience here, um, so that helps. But um, I don't know. The setup was the felt super balanced. Um, put some put some ballast in it in practice, and I picked up speed. He kept a nose down with these cold conditions. We're going so fast, and nose was lifting. So put some ballast in it. it helped a lot, and um, really just drove our best every lap, and just flowed. And Watkins Glen is considered kind of the most the most oval of most road courses because you have a lot of similar bends. Not a lot of 90 degrees, not a lot of chicanes, save for the inner loop. Did that help a little bit? Was it a little bit easier to drive than something like a circuit to Spa Frankershamps? Uh, yeah, for sure, except for the boot. The boot's uh, a little different, but, you know, I'm so, yeah, like, the S's in the last couple turns are pretty simple turns, but uh, the inner loop is definitely... Uh, uh, something you gotta get right because you can easily just lose a lot of time there you can also gain a lot of time so but yeah, this is definitely like the most oval road course we go to for sure well we get to head to twin ring motegi next month out and uh very interesting because we're using the grand prix layout they have an oval there but no we're not going to ovals so bobby what size up twin ring motegi what's your feeling on that track what are you thinking how's the truck do you think gonna run there We'll see. Hopefully we can run up front still. Uh, I've never raced at all there, so I'm going to make sure I get practicing for that. But uh, So I, I look forward to that because I've never raced there. I, I like new challenges. Um, I, I think the, the setup I have constructed over the season will work just about anywhere. Uh, so that should be all right, and um, we'll just have to get some practice laps in and learn the corners. Well, you mentioned the setup, and I know you can't get it done by yourself. Sponsor shout-outs. Who gets it done for you and the 83 truck? Yeah, shout-out to uh, everyone at SOR that puts this league on. It's a very fun league. Uh, uh, shout-out to everybody at Slip Angle Motorsports on the PK Andy Free Series side. We, we raced Darlington in two days, and I think we have a pretty good car. So hopefully we can do good in that and go and race for a championship. Uh, and uh, thanks to everybody here at Race Buff for putting on the broadcast. And thanks to my sponsors that aren't on the truck but are on my cup car. Um, uh, United Western Industries, uh, New Age Metal Finishing, and uh, Virtual Racing School. Speaking of going to Darlington, before I let you go, got any plans for throwback cars? For sure. We're going to run a 1999 uh, Dale Jarrett car. So uh, it looks pretty, pretty spectacular. Uh, Infinite Creative Solutions uh, painted it for me, and I can't wait to run it. All right, well, that's Bobby Zelensky gets it done from Watkins Glen. Bobby, we'll see you in two days from the Darlington Raceway. But until then, take it easy, bud. Thanks. Well, that's Bobby Zelensky gets it done from Watkins Glen International. Hand the mic over to Jake Sperry, who's run down out of the broadcast tower onto pit road and is caught up with some of our second and third place runners. How about Sven Kamertz? Yes, Sven Kamitz joining us then from what is going to be second position. Sven, uh, a very, very difficult defensive drive from you today. Started third, got yourself up to second quite quickly, getting around Borja Vieiro. But for you yourself, you know, Watkins Glen proved to be a very difficult challenge and your defensive mentality certainly came into play here today. Yeah, I had a lot of pressure from uh, Victoria and uh, the battle with uh, uh, Valera was also very nice at the beginning. But yeah, I had to drive a bit defensively. It's not my greatest track, Watkins Glen, but uh, 
yeah, the thing did work out all right in the end. Certainly did. And let's talk about what happened towards the end of the event. You're under a huge amount of pressure from Borges, uh, from Victor Lobato, shall I say. And a little bit of contact coming out of the toe of the boot. What happened on your end? I wasn't too stable. I had a bit of trouble going into the boot and I wasn't on the ideal line. And maybe a bit too much throttle and uh, a little bit of a, a wiggle on the exit. And yeah, well, we did make contact, but I'm going to leave it up to race control for uh, for the, to, make, to come up with a decision for that. So all in the hands of the gods, but the next time that we're going to be seeing us, two rounds left till the end of the season. We head to Twin Ring Motegi. They've locked the oval up for us, so it's going to have to be the road course. Uh, for the road drivers, you could argue it is that big advantage because of Motegi having an oval. So in terms of the way that you're looking at this circuit, are you feeling that maybe you can pick up your first race win of the season? Uh, there's definitely a good chance. I like Motegi as, as well. The, the road as the oval, I've both had win the, wins there. So uh, it's a very special track as well, but it rather suits me, I think. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And before we let you go, shout out sponsors. Who gets it done for Sven Kamitz finishing in second today? Uh, well, it would be GP Racing, MRG and Sherry Stone Solutions. And of course, I would also like to thank you guys for the broadcast and uh, Stephen for setting, out, setting up the, this event. Not a problem at all. Sven Kamitz coming home in second place. Cisco, who have you managed to find? Well, I'm going to go a little bit rapid fire because you got to make your way over into the skippies pretty soon here, Jake. So I'm going to go rapid fire. First up, Borja Vieiro. We're going to pull him in here, the guy who finished third. And Borja, great run for you. Talk us through it. How was it out there? Well, uh, hard race to me. Uh, I started in second place. I tried to... To have a good pace at the start of the of the race, but um, lap seven, my I realized that my engine started to overheating. I had to slow down a little, little bit, and then I tried. Uh, I go to box to try to to refrigerate the engine and take new tires um, to do an undercut uh, to Sven, but I can overtake him. Uh, that was impossible, and then I let Victor uh, pass me. He's fighting for the championship and try to get to get uh, Sven and try to overtake him. Uh, but well, uh, they have a good fight and some car contact, and I have the third place. <laughs> Well, maybe not running in the championship, but nonetheless, a very good points day for you, bringing it home, P3. Orja, who gets it done for you in the uh, in the truck? Uh, sorry, I, I don't understand uh, English. Sponsors, shout, and... sponsors <laughs> shout outs. Sorry? <laughs> uh, sponsors? Oh, thank you, all the team. I'm guessing... Uh sponsor of the team and thank you Victor to to help me to prepare the race all right well that's Borja Vallero great run uh that's Luego and uh we'll see you next round yeah uh, okay thank you and uh now gonna see if I can catch up with the guy who finished uh fourth that would be Victor Lobato and uh Victor great run for you finished p4 how was it out there great battle towards the end uh, hello, uh, thanks for all. Uh, the the race, the qualifying was the key of the race because I didn't do my best lap and I was fifth in the race. I have rim a lot of rim and push. I have pushed hard, mm, uh, but and Borja Valero gave me the position to. To come to Steven Kamerts and I have a contact with uh, with him, and he's the the I <laughs> the worst thing of the race. But fourth position, the championship is closed. But I have a little bit uh, possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. You're still close on Sven Kamerts on the championship, but Victor, sponsors, shout-outs, uh, anyone you want to say hello to at all? I don't understand. Uh, I have... I can come here, Borja Valero, please? Uh, yeah, I'll drag him back up. 
uh hold on uh Portia, uh how do you say uh sponsors i don't have a sponsors <laughs> oh spon oh well there you go well anyone you want to say hola to at all ¿Cómo, cómo? Borja, ¿qué ha dicho? Que si quiere decir hola a alguien. Ah, sí, gracias a Borja Valero. Thanks to Borja Valero for the setup and eh, all the supports. All right, well, that's the two Spanish drivers and we'll see you all later again. Bye. Adios. Adios. Bye. And uh, we're going to catch up with one more driver here, and uh, I won't have to test my Spanish, I believe. Actually, no, we got two more. So we're going to catch up with Cruitant first, the guy who finished right behind Victor Lobato. And Justin, great run for you out there. It was looking like a great battle. Talk us through it. You finished P5. How was it? It was good. Um, you know, David Bearcall really kept me honest. I kind of settled into a bubble once the top guys pulled away, but then he and David tried the undercut on me. And that whole second run was very difficult to hold him off, but I actually managed to do it, so that's good. Well, we're kind of in rapid-fire mode here, so Justin will give you an opportunity. Sponsors, shout-outs. Who gets it done for you guys? Well, i got to thank my teammate, Daniel Thompson. Uh, he helps me a lot with setups and stuff. And uh got to thank Steven for putting the league on and you guys for broadcasting it. That's Justin Crutoff finishes fifth here, and Justin will we'll, uh, we'll chat later. All right, sounds good. And then finally, we got David Barnclown down here on the lane, the last driver who's uh, come up here to talk a little bit. And David, you finished P6, started six, finished six, but the uh, story goes a little bit tougher than that. How was it out there? Oh, that's definitely correct. Um, no, it was really enjoyable, uh, really enjoyable race. Um, very difficult um, to keep the truck on the track here this week uh, with the... The cold conditions, uh, there was a lot of grip, but as soon as you ov started overdriving and sliding the tires, the, the truck would just kill you. So, <laughs> yeah, trying to keep it on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the straight and narrow was, was pretty difficult this week. Well, David, you fought and fought and maintained P6, so uh, anyone you want to say hello to, sponsors, shoutouts? Yeah, I'd just like to say uh, hi to the rest of the uh, Top Freak uh, Racing uh, family, I suppose. Um, we've been... Uh, yeah, um, putting in a lot of hard work recently, um, working on sets, working to improve, and um, basically c coming up to some really big endurance series. So um, I just like to say thanks, guys, uh, and let's let's keep at it. Let's make a big fight of uh, of this upcoming um, endurance series because uh, that's what we do. Absolutely, David Baraklau, uh Congrats on the P6 run. We'll talk to you later. Cheers, man. See you later. Well, that's going to do it for interviews. Jake Sperry had to run off and uh, go do some Skip Barber races, so I brought Paul Smith out of the production truck. He took his headset off, put on the broadcast headsets, come up here, and, well, Paul, I'll talk to you a little bit about it because we still have to pick ourselves a hard charger for the race. I have to get the feeling I'm looking at the qualifying and where they started, where they finished. Mark Kapal started 13th and finished 7th. He's a pretty good option for it. Yeah, I was going to say he would be one of the uh, the favorites for that uh, that particular award i would give a good shout out also to daniel thompson some very hard charging uh racing there and uh to move up uh actually no he moved down position so forget about that uh bram renez would be another one who could possibly uh be up for that award as well really there's not many not many options really out there today um for that award but uh, for me mark kapal to gain so many positions after not qualifying, uh, he would be my uh, my hard charger of the day. Well, make it make it easy for anyone who's on stream. The people eligible for it: Victor Lobano, and then Martin Capaz, as we alluded to earlier, and Bram Reniers, and I believe John Medeiros, and I believe that's everyone eligible. So, if you want to pick one of those guys, tweet at Socks Out Racing, and that driver is going to receive a month subscription of I Analyze Racing Software. We heard a lot about them during the commercial break, but Paul, final thoughts: Watkins Glen International, great race, a lot of great battling. How was it? What was your opinion? Well, I mean, Watkins Glen always produces fantastic racing here, and we saw uh, one man just absolutely just dominant with Bobby Zelensky. Nobody could touch him today. And the battle that we saw, though, it was interesting to see how everybody just sort of got into little groups and got uh, together in packs, and they started working together, fighting. I thought seeing... Um, Kemats uh, and Lobato coming onto pit lane 
I had I was breathing in through my teeth through that for, for that one. That was very close indeed, but uh, they were able to keep it on track and kept it going, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, some great racing. Not too many mistakes either made. Only a couple of uh, spins in today's race. So we're definitely these drivers showing that they have the ability and showing that they can uh, provide some exciting racing. Absolutely. Two races left to go in the V8 Super Truck Championship. Next race, Twin Ring Motegi. We're heading to Japan for that one. That's going to be fun. And then, Paul, it's looming. The last race on the schedule. Mount Panorama, the mountain, Bathurst. If I'm a driver and I'm looking at that schedule, it's just kind of sitting there like, oh yeah, we still have to drive Bathurst. Yeah, that's it. I'm just showing the, uh, the the schedule that's remaining. And yeah, as you say, two more rounds of this fantastic championship. Twin Room Teke, the Grand Prix circuit. It is a, a challenging circuit. And don't forget, you've got that, uh, that Japanese tarmac. It doesn't give as much uh, grip as you would think it would. So there'll be a lot of sliding. The tyres will build up temperature a lot quicker. So you're going to see each drivers, whoever can look after their tyres the best, do well in that race. But yeah, Mount Panorama. But first, it is it is one of those iconic venues in mo world mode sport. You know, you've got Daytona, you've got Indianapolis, you've got uh, Le Mans, and well, Bathurst is sort of like the Southern Hemisphere sort of mecca of motorsport. And uh, I, I'm certainly looking forward to uh, bringing that final round. That's then, this is now. So we're going to, I think, Paul, it's time we're going to cue the music and we're going to start to wrap up here from Watkins Glen International here in Watkins Glen, New York. And, of course, we want to give a big shout-out to Ionalyze Racing, all their software, everything they help out sponsoring this series, and, of course, Nash Hendry, Christian Chalonier, and Steve Burbage, who gets it done from the administration team for Socks Out Racing. But time to wrap it up. So for Paul Smith down in the production trailer, for Jake Sperry, who joined us earlier, and for myself, Cisco Scaramuzzi, we want to say thank you very much for watching round number seven of the Socks Out Racing. I analyze racing.com V8 Super Truck Championship. We'll see you in Japan in one month, but until then, keep it off the wall until we meet again. Averaging 0 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. Hit box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10, 4. Adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires.